Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and I have with me a group of people I think you are going to find very fascinating. One of the things I really love about doing Evanston Live TV is just hearing about all the amazing things that people are doing that people don't even realize it's going on. Evanston has so many wonderful organizations and programs, um, so many that are here to help nurture, develop, and build our communities, our young people. And we tend to just really not know that these amazing things are going on in the community that can really help the youth, help adults, help everyone overall in the community. So I had the pleasure of meeting David Finkel and they have an organization called Youth Technology Corp. Do I have that right? Yes, like Marine Corps. <laughs> yes, and I had such a wonderful conversation with him. Um, I was really fascinated with what they are doing. And the more he told me about this program and how he's teaching the youth to become leaders and mentors in it themselves to come back to the program while they're in college to teach others to do exactly what they learned to do. And so to me, that is true leadership because it's gonna to continue to grow. It doesn't just stop with one person. Um, it just continues to grow and grow and grow. That is community leadership. So I can't wait for you all to hear all about this. So please welcome David Finkel, Owen Daly and Miles Daly and they're twins, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. So, David, our conversation I've been thinking about ever since. And I'm so glad that you brought Owen and Miles on. I really want people to see how powerful this, this organization that you have started is, is really growing, how impactful it is and how impactful it can be if more people know about it. So. Mr. Finkel, please tell us all about Youth Technology Corp. Okay, so I'm gonna lead, uh, but I hopefully will quickly turn it over to Owen and Miles. So uh, I'll give background later. What I wanna start by focusing on is that Owen and Miles and um, a, a number of other students who comprise the YTC Leadership Club are holding for the second year a free robotics uh, camp this summer. This is a virtual at home, but hands-on camp. And it's going to be taught by Owen and Miles and a team of students. And so we wanna talk about that. Now, I wanna explain about Owen and Miles. They are seniors at Evanston High School. They have been in the club since their freshman year. Um, they are now co-presidents of, of the Evanston Club. But more importantly, I want to give a little background before I turn this over to the two of them. Uh, and so back in March of last year, when everything closed down and the schools closed down, we switched over to Zoom and the students continued to meet. Uh, and so Owen and Miles as the co-presidents of the club would lead the meetings. And in one of the first meetings, uh, these students not only teach robotics, they also refurbish computers that they donate to the community. And our club at Evanston has literally over the last 12 years, probably donated more than 1500 computers to families and organizations throughout Evanston. Uh, and so I announced to the, to the group uh, I said, look guys, you know, everything is closed down. We can't get into the school. So uh, I don't know how we would, you know, I, we're not gonna be able to do any refurbishing. And Owen and Miles uh, immediately popped up and they said, gee, you know, that it's too bad. Uh, if the computers were ever needed that we donate, it's probably right now, we would be willing to donate uh, to refurbish at home. When they said that, Everybody else on the call said, yes, we would too. 
And so over the last school year, they have, been, they have continued to refurbish and deliver computers to families and organizations, including uh, books and breakfast, um, as well as families. So uh, as a part of the leadership club, part of their training is to tell the story and get the word out about the summer camp and also uh, to see if we can you know, recruit more kids uh, to, to take this free camp. And also if people so think it's worthwhile, uh, perhaps to, to raise a little money. So I am going to turn it over to Owen and Miles um, and they're gonna, I'm gonna leave it to them to explain what the camp is all about and answer your questions. All right. Yeah. Welcome, so, uh, Owen and Miles. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm glad to be here. Um, the summer camp this year is going to be free of charge. Uh, we're going to have uh, 120 openings for students uh, from ages of um, elementary to even college students, for, uh, if they want to um, learn about this. Um, the camp is five weeks. Uh, there are going to be three days a week, one hour a day. Um, and it introduces youth to uh, introductory level robotics and coding um, skills that are increasingly valuable uh, as the this technology continues to advance. Um, it's taught by high school and college students with a student teacher ratio of five to one. So there are 10 student classrooms uh, with uh, well, virtual classrooms with um, two teachers per uh, which we found to be like uh, an effective way of teaching because the uh, the team uh, of teacher of two teachers allows them to uh, explain and um, hopefully fill some of the gaps and like uh, any like knowledge that some of the others don't and stuff like that. Um, so the camp starts uh, begins Monday June twenty eighth and ends Friday uh, July thirtieth. Um, and the materials uh, will be delivered to the students at fr uh, free of charge. Free is always uh, nice to hear, especially yeah. when it comes to technology. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hi, Miles. Yeah. Hello. So, um, our camping five, the only one, like one hour a day for three days a week allows p students to like balance this with work or like with a summer job or with another summer camp so th this basically allows them it, we're like very flexible on timing we can pretty much time it at any point of the day we like if we want to do it over the week if it's more e it's easier for the students to do it over the weekend we can do that too so yeah we're, we're very flexible on timing so if anyone watching is uh, a little bit concerned about that we can make it work okay um, it looks like, are you all at home or in your, or in your college dorms? Oh, I, I'm at home because we're still, uh, we're still high schoolers. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why I was thinking you guys were in college already. <laughs> all right. So, God, I have so many questions. So, you mentioned robotics. I've, excuse me, because I'm not tech savvy. So, you all have to, you know bear with me, talk to me as if I'm two, three years old here, okay? <laughs> so I'm just really becoming familiar with robotics, like uh, like robotics, they're using it more and more in surgery, um, in hospitals. And so doc, it's really like the robotics that's actually operating on people's bodies now, which is like, whoa, it, it just kind of freaks me out a little bit, but it's, um, it's genius. Um, when did you all really get interested in, in robotics? Because it is, it's fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Um, I first got interested in robotics actually through this club. Like I didn't really know any, like anything about it before I joined and the people there were able to teach me the, a lot of the basics. And then once I got a understanding of the basics i'm able to move on and mm -hmm. uh, find and work on stuff on my own and just like basically create my own projects with it mm -hmm. and yeah this i've basically gone through the same learning that these students will be going through so yeah it, mm -hmm. 
if it can if it helped me get interested in robotics i i would hope that it would also help others i would hope and imagine it would help others okay and and owen i mean was was technology always an interest i mean maybe not robotics but um did, were you all always intrigued this technology it just seems like it's growing more and more each day by the second like i can't even keep up <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't even keep up with it. Yeah, I had an interest in uh, technology entering the camp. Uh, that's mm -hmm. basically the main reason I joined the camp in the first place. Um, but it introduced me to a, a whole lot of new things. And it introduced me into ways that I can help out my community uh, through computer donations and um, teaching the summer camp. Um, and yeah, uh, I Again, like Miles, I didn't really have a whole lot, didn't really have an interest in robotics before joining the camp, but uh, joining the club, excuse me. Um, and yeah, now I've uh, learned enough that I can teach it, uh, teach what I know to others. It seems like it seems like that's where uh, technology is really going. So I applaud you all for um, getting the community more involved in computers, technology, on whatever level they are, because it's needed. Like you can no longer just ignore it. Like, mm, I, I don't have time to deal with that. I'm gonna just continue to write letters. Like I have an aunt that still prefers to write letters, <laughs> right? So um, she's so left behind right now. So it's, it's getting to a point where you can't operate. You can't even deal in daily life. And, and Malika, the interesting thing about this, uh, so the, the kinds of complicated robots that you're talking about, and they're being used all the time in industry and uh, uh, in, in cars, uh, so many different things. It's based on really fundamental, simple principles that kids and young adults will learn in this program. So in other words, there, there are simple things like resistors and diodes. Diodes are those little things that light up. And you, you learn how to light them up. Uh, and you learn uh, the, the motors that make the wheels go round are, are servo motors. And you learn how to turn those on. When I say you learn, what I'm really saying is that you learn how to take a piece of code you don't write the code, but you take a piece of code, you know what that code does, You're, you, you, you can look it up, and then you use a connector to connect it to the code of that machine or that diode, and then you give it an instruction, and the, wheel, the motor will go around, or the light turns on, or the light will flash. And what's interesting is the more complicated machines are all building blocks of those steps, just a lot of them with a lot of different motors or a lot. So you may learn how to use a servo motor, but there are giant size motors and you may learn, you may have to get the code that gives that giant motor, but you understand how to turn a motor on because you've already learned it. So it is a, it, 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 it's fascinating. And the biggest thing that, I'm, that I wanna to talk to all the parents and, and, and guardians and families out there is too few of our kids are going into these subjects. The job opportunities are there today and they will be tomorrow. And so one of the things that we wanna do and encourage is if uh, a family is listening and there are two or three kids they can all take it together with the idea that just like our high school and college students are helping, the oldest in the family can make sure that the next one in line is learning and together they can teach the youngest so that all three come out because what we really wanna do is help very young kids try this stuff on because if they do, that's when they'll start to like it. Mm. And you bring up a really interesting point about careers because, you know, when kids are in high school, I mean, they're even starting them younger, but in high school, you know, the, the counselors, the parents start talking like, what are some things that you're interested in? And you kind of start taking those interests in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of kids right now are actually choosing 
trade schools more than the traditional college. And I can't tell you, I have several friends. I'm a lot older than Miles and Owen, um, but uh, they, they hadn't, they didn't finish college. They went straight into IT because they took a program similar to what it sounds like what you all are doing. And I mean, they were making six figures like in no time while everyone else was still at the entry level jobs and, you know, finishing college or trying to figure it out. Uh, those that went into IT, I mean, their careers skyrocket because it's so needed. That knowledge is so needed. Exactly. Well, I think that it, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a very important point. So this is a field, the entire, so as you can tell from the computers to the robotics, which is all connected in, in, in ways in terms of language and, and what you're doing, it is such a fundamental part of the future, the present, that it is the opportunity um, and, and, and so the more that we can get kids with the understanding that this is where your opportunity is. And what's interesting is, yes, you getting a degree is certainly advantage, but this is a field that if you know what you're doing, <laughs> you don't need a degree. <laughs> yes. So, and, and, and frankly, the way most of the employers that I know evaluate an, uh, somebody, um, they, they may ask for A plus certification or something, but everything is based on a trial test given what, you know, to see really, do they know what they're doing? Mm. That, that's the main thing. So you, you create a career in this field when you learn how to do it. Mm. Mm. That is so true and i know that uh i'm generations away from you know the youngsters today but my friends that went into that field once they really started learning what you all are talking about um sky's the limit to their opportunities they became consultants and i mean it, it is they're very successful they're very successful in it and you know there, I want to stress another thing. Mm -hmm. This is useful even if you have no interest in computers or robotics, uh, but just want to take it for the experience because in addition to those skills and understandings that you're gaining, it's also a troubleshooting process, a problem solving process. Mm -hmm. And anything that helps our young people to learn how to on their own know how to solve a problem instead of waiting for somebody to give them an answer is one of the most crucial requirements in life of jobs in the future today <laughs> well, and today life. <laughs> so we want you know we want especially those families uh, you know, who aren't going to have the money to send their kids to camp or provide a, a extras. We want to make sure that that any family that that is in within reach knows. Um, I don't know if I sent you a, a flyer of this, um, but um, I will after this call, uh, I will send it to you and the flyer um, has on it a link that you can go to and apply right then and there. So we're taking applications for the summer camp now. We haven't given final decisions on which days and times, but the dates are certain from, from the end of Ju June to the end of July. This is uh, really awesome. I can't wait to get this information out uh, to the community. Um, what message would you give to kids who are more uh, operate from whichever side of the brain that's more uh, artsy creative. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would you say to them in terms of um, they should get involved in this? I mean- Well, two, two, two very important messages. Number one, uh, the art world is using these technologies 
uh, both visual and robotics. There are uh, literally on an international basis, uh, there are uh, art displays uh, in which this kind of robotics and making things work is absolutely part of the development. Secondly, to take this again, not only the problem solving, because electricity and electronics are such an integral part of our world, to have an understanding, to, it, one of the reasons we teach about the computer is so that most of the students don't go on to be computer techs. But once you know how the, what's inside the black box, you have a different perspective and you feel more comfortable. The same is true in terms of understanding how electricity and data uh, and how coding works. You may never become a coder, but if you put, if you used code, I think this is more important than learning how to write code. If you use code to make something work in the real world, you have a sense of how the world is beginning to work on so many different levels mm -hmm. because that's what's making the world work. Code to machine to something changing. Mm -hmm. And so just as a preliminary class uh, with kids, your peers teaching it on a very small basis, one to five ratio, you're getting a sense of how all that gets put together. And that gives you a level of understanding about the world you live in that may not be translated into specific results, but gives you a sense of understanding of your world that kind of gives you a platform of confidence when you look out at anything else that's new. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the, the two points because some people be like, oh, well, I don't have that engineer tech kind of mind, but the way that you've laid it out, one, it's development just in dealing with life. If you can problem solve, you need that skill throughout life, period. I don't care what your career choice is. Um, being able to, like you said, look into that box and figure out how it works and make it work, fix it to make it work, uh, you can apply that to life skills. And then for those kids who, you know, like myself, artsy and creative. So sometimes we fear things like this, you know, the whole coding and formulas and things like that. But the way that you explain that is that this is the art world too. And I've been seeing more and more mm -hmm. of it actually. Um, my mom is in the art world. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot more of this. So actually this, this applies to everyone. This, mm -hmm. This does not exclude anyone. And, and that's what I love about it. And it actually teaches just developmental skills for life period. I love this. Absolutely love this. I wish she was around when I was a youth. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure Owen and Miles would love to, to uh, have you join one of the classes. We'll provide you with a kit. And uh, not only that, but the, the you know, for busy people or for somebody who has plans, the sessions are posted on YouTube. So right now, we right now, uh, in fact, Owen and Miles begin next Monday teaching another group of, of students who will become the trainers this, this summer. Mm -hmm. And so we have those the sessions are on YouTube so that students who miss because they're not going to be perfect can go back uh, to to the session and see it and with their kit follow along. If they're not sure of something, they can go back and review the session. So all of that makes it very possible. It, it, Owen said earlier that this is something that because it's only three hours a week and various times, you, anybody can do it. You know, it's not like a camp that requires you, you know, you're going to have to go put in eight hours a day or five hours a day. And so it's really not possible to do anything else. This is something that if you're going on vacation in the middle of this and you're anywhere close to a computer that has internet and most people don't want to be for too far away from it, you can take a couple of hours out during your vacation and still, you know, continue on with the project. Yes, this is awesome. 
And I thought of you all instantly when um, I had seen a video on YouTube of, I don't know if it was DoorDash or Grubhub, I don't know, but it was a robot delivering food in LA on its own by itself. And this guy was driving his car. He was like, what the heck is that? And then he saw another one crossing the street. And then he saw another one crossing the street. So he followed one to an address because he had never seen it before. And, you know, then the, the customer came down from his apartment and, you know, got his food from the little robot. And I mean, I was like, wow. <laughs> That's where we're going. That's where we're headed. So every week uh, we have um, uh, multiple sessions a week, one with each group, and then we have a combined where all the kids are together on a single session. And Miles and Owen every uh, once a week provide uh, um, a curious uh, a video, uh, and they're they've come they have found all kinds of crazy things. But I want to get them into it. If, uh, again, I I have a tendency to talk too much. Uh, one of the things I would like the, your permission. So one of the things that they are in the process of doing, they have just finished preparing a presentation and they're, you know, we've raised about 60% of the money, but we still need to raise some more of the money and they need, this is gonna be their first time to try it out on somebody that's not, not you know, uh, somebody they know. So I'd like to turn it, I'd like you to turn it over to them uh, and as if they were telling, you know, coming to ask you uh, for some support. All right, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so um, as Dave said, we've raised about 60% uh, of the money. Um, we have, we have uh, $11,200 left to, left to raise um and any donation uh help any donation counts um like 30 dollars could pay for one ro robot kit. okay my cat is all over me sorry um 30 dollars pays for one robotics starter kit uh one uh, 100 dollars pays for pays for a uh, robotics starter kit and a robot car um 300 dollars pays for the stipend for one student teacher and 2000 can pay for the master teacher so um, if anyone is watching at home that um, is interested by this uh, by, by this camp and uh, wants to support it, um, can send us an email or check out the website. Um, Dave, can, uh, have you like supplied your email? In the... No, you should uh, actually. You can put it in chat, right? Yes. Um, well, I'll be sure to put the. Um address in the description for everybody yeah, they, the they can go to the youth technology core website mm -hmm. uh, and there's a donate button at the top right uh, which is a paypal you know they, they have choices of how to do it all the organizations have the same kind of thing so that's the, that's what they can do uh, to make a donation yes yeah, awesome. also something that you can do without even having to directly donate anything is uh why do you see is an amazon smile supported uh a nonprofit. So if you don't know what that is, you can basically it's if you search Google Amazon Smile, you can uh link YTC to your Amazon account so that whenever you buy something off Amazon, a small portion of it goes is donated to YTC. So basically even if you don't can't really afford or if you don't feel comfortable um donating directly to the club, you can still uh put that into Amazon Smile. So whenever you're using Amazon to order something, oh, we it helps us a little bit. So, yeah. That is awesome. And everybody uses Amazon almost yeah. every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're ordering stuff, getting stuff delivered almost every day from Amazon Prime, right? Oh. Right, and doesn't cost the it doesn't cost the person anything. Hmm. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. This is really, this is really great. This is really great. Um, everything is moving so fast. And I feel like no matter what level you're at, you definitely need to at least learn some basics. At least learn some basics just to keep up. And, and if you're a young person, most definitely, because uh, you're entering into this 
you'll be entering into the career world and it, it seems like you can really get left behind if you don't have just some basics. Well, there's really two that they, absolutely right. I mean, uh, to get the fundamentals, but it's also an attitude which has, has to change uh, and everybody talks about it. And that is you go to school to get your formal education, but you never stop learning because everything is changing. So you cannot just stand in place. To stand in place requires you to constantly learn to stay in place. Yeah. So it, 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 it also means a, a, a change in attitude. And of course, young people are, are more apt to pick that up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you have mm, a lot of people, maybe my age and, and older, who are just in resistant mode. <laughs> in resistant mode, just not wanting to, uh, their brain can't take anymore, especially formulas and coding. But uh, this is so fascinating to me, even as, a, as, a, as an older person, um, I'm wanting to, learn more. I just feel like I need to learn more, uh, some basics and fundamentals. Even we're, we're all, <laughs> we're all users of technology. Yes. And, and, and so, you know, and, and the technology is always changing. You know, if you don't mind, I'd like to now give a little background on the organization and, and kind yes. of give a sense of, because uh, we're not just in Evanston. So YTC started in Cicero, Illinois, with Morton East High School back in the late 90s. And by 2000, uh, the students had started strictly as a computer program. Uh, the kids were, basically I started a computer club there. And um, one of my business clients um, had a hundred computers that were uh, being replaced uh, and said, you know, if you can use them, let me know. And I went to the principal, I had started a computer club and I said, give me a place to, um, uh, put them and I can bring a hundred computers that the kids can work on. And that started it. Within a, 18 months, uh, the kids had refurbished and donated computer labs to five different community organizations, boys and girls clubs, youth commissions, um, and uh, even children's centers for, with uh, preschool kids. And they were, and they had begun teaching on those computers. And so then we, Cicero is mostly Mexican American. And in the summer of 99, I sent a letter home to the, to the families ask, offering them to don't, if they were interested in having a computer lab brought to their hometown in Mexico. And so in 2000, I took six kids and 10 computers to rural towns in Durango, Mexico, uh, where the kids went to church on Sunday to announce that we would, we had set up the computers in a, in the first computers in a primary school and that we would hold classes. It was during the summer and we didn't know how many people would show up and 60 people showed up. And since then we have now on a 22, we're, we're in a 22 year relationship with them. Evanston started, the chairman of the board at the time uh, had been a lifelong resident of Evanston. And so 12 years ago, we, st we started uh, the program in Evanston. That program, as I mentioned before, has donated computers all over, but also they followed, when they saw what the Cicero group was doing with Mexico, they wanted to do the same thing. So in 2016, uh, we took six students from ETHS uh, and six laptops to New Orleans to help New Orleans. We had both a school and a church. And in three days, the kids, uh, the church had, had been given a donation of 40 computers that they didn't know what to do with because they, they needed to be refurbished. So the kids descended on the church and in one and a half days refurbished 40 computers and set them up as two computer labs for the church and then went to a small charter school, a Dinkra school in New Orleans and spent a day, they delivered the six laptops plus five more desktops and then held an all day series of seminars, both with the kids 
and with the teachers of the school, showing them how to use the computers and giving them some lessons on how to research on the internet. Yeah. So there's a, there's a whole history of empowering kids uh, to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And that is so important to teach them to do it themselves. And knowledge is just power. Knowledge is power and being self-sufficient and seeking that information and figuring it all out on your own. And that's what the program, it teaches you to figure it out. It teaches you to figure it out. So yes, yes. Wow, this is really, this is really awesome. Where have you all been? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, it's a small, basically it's a small organization of uh, essentially a couple of part-time people and volunteers. And so we haven't had the resources to promote ourselves. So it's, it's mainly been focused on the communities, you know, the schools and the community organizations that were able to help um, because there hasn't been the bandwidth to promote. We're doers, not promoters. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could use all the help we can get on the promotion side. Well, I'm definitely going to do my part to get it out to the community as, as best I can, because I think this is so valuable um, on any level that someone is in terms of how this all works. And I love that you all are teaching kids to just to do it yourself and to problem solve and handing the baton over for them to teach other kids. That's that's powerful, absolutely powerful to me. Um, what are some of the stories? Uh, I know I have to let you all go. Um, what are some of this? I got two more questions. I actually have more than that, but I know I got to let you go. So <laughs> what are uh, maybe some, some success stories, some stories of some kids that you worked with that just, you were like, wow. I know okay, you so with all of them. But <laughs> yeah, so a couple, couple of quick ones. Alex Balmer went to ETHS. Uh, became president of the club, uh, got a four-year scholarship to IIT, Ooh. finished that, and went on to get his master's degree within the same, I think it took him altogether four and a half years of grueling work, and he's now in a you know serious position in IT in the Chicago area. Um, <clears throat> Jesus Carrera, this goes back to uh, what the one of the first students and we actually we actually spent that first trip to Mexico in Jesus's grandfather's barn on that first trip. Jesus went on to become a uh, IT engineer. He's now a senior engineer with Adobe Systems. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, oh, let's see, uh, Anna um, went on to get a, a uh, a degree in engineering and now is, uh, I believe she's still with ComEd uh, as an electrical engineer. Olga, um, who was on the first trip to Mexico, went on to get a PhD in bio microelectrical engineering and is now a research scientist at Johns Hopkins. Woo! So all right now. We have, we have some, you know, Pretty and, and but those are the ones that stand out. Uh, there are also just tons of kids who have simply gone on to successful careers. Nothing spectacular, but you know, gotten jobs and 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 found their way into into industry with the skills that they manage, both with what we taught them and what they got in school. Well, spectacular is knowledge is spectacular on on mm -hmm. is just. And this kind of knowledge is sky's the limit of <laughs> what you can do with it. I'm, I'm curious, Owen and Miles, what are your plans? Um, so yeah, I haven't, I still haven't committed to a school yet. I'm gonna do that probably soon. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'm currently expecting, like I, I think I wanna major in mathematics in college. And also uh, data science is something I'm also interested in, which like just learning with some, this like problem solving has helped with math and also because like even though it's not like directly related in some ways it's still going to help and also data science i know involves like some coding and stuff and i've learned some coding here so mm. Mm. yeah 
Mm. Yeah, and also like the, the um, teaching in the summers has uh, like I, I'm kind of interested in becoming a teacher now because um, awesome. yeah, like um, teaching the summers has get, gotten like uh, got me the experience in that, and it seems like something that would be fun and uh, meaningful for the community. Wow, wow. So how do you all feel? You might, you know, help the next Mark Zuckerberg, right? <laughs> and they'll say, oh, it all started. I was part of the, the YTC group. So, you know, and what, he was in college. He didn't, I don't even think he finished, did he? But he was doing coding. That's what it, that's where it started. That's where Facebook started. Yes. <laughs> That's where Facebook started. Wow. Well, I am so impressed. And um, I just want to say thank you for your service to the community with this. This is this is a jewel. This is a gift. Uh, and, and it's a gift that's going to keep on giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So thank you so much. And please, one more time before I let you all go, one more time, let everyone know where they can reach out and one, become a part of the program, two, donate to help you all further this, this mission. Okay, so it's Youth Technology Core, and that's C-O-R-P-S. And uh, if they go to the website, uh, you don't have to remember the website. All you have to do, if you Google Youth Technology Core, um, our mailing address is 1055 West Bryn Mawr, just so they, they'll know they're at the right place. But also, the flyer is posted on the website. Uh, so they can just go to the website and uh, then uh, get the link. The website will also give them some idea of uh, our history and the current activities and posts. You'll see some pictures of Owen and Miles along with some of their other members while they were uh, donating computers to different groups. So uh, it's a good way of just finding out about uh, who we are. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Owen, Miles. Thank you. Please continue the work. And, and I would love to follow up with you guys just to see where you are <laughs> later on. I'm excited for your future. Very, very excited. And thank you so much, David, for this vision. Thank you. Well, Malika, thank you so much for this opportunity. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. <laughs> Most definitely. All right. Well, we are going to follow up um, with this group. I am so impressed. And um, I'll be sure to put the contact information for all of you out there be in the description of this post. And uh, reach out. Uh, get your kids involved. Uh, donate, whether it's monetary or donating computers. Um, all sorts of materials that, that they can use to continue to uh, help educate the community on an industry that is forever changing and growing. And we cannot ignore it. We cannot escape. We can't act like it's not happening. It's here. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is here. So you all, please be sure to look up the Youth Technology Core and just see what they're all about. See what they're all about and see how you can help or become a part. So. Please stay tuned here on Evanston Live TV. We have more amazing people coming up right here.